I'll show you when we get to the epidemiology that how it's spread throughout the uh, Mediterranean region. Uh, let me go back just quickly, briefly say, okay, the Telhashimer criteria says the major criteria are those, which I'm not going to read, amyloidosis is there, and then a response to colchicine, that means uh, it is FMF because colchicine really helps almost 98% or 99% of the uh, people who have it. Then minor criteria is the uh, fever and some uh, rashes on the skin, especially on the feet and ankles, and uh, if FMF is in another person in the family. So if we have two of those major criteria, that's a definitive uh, diagnosis of FMF. Or if we have one of the major and two of the minor, that's again definitive diagnosis. But uh, this was done before the genetics came by. In 1997, French scientists found the gene for FMF. And French have really done a lot of work, and you'll be surprised because French, not only they have it with lesser percentages, they have huge population of Jews, Armenians, and Arabs who have it in the country. So they started doing good research on, on, on that and, and Armenians, the University of Yerevan scientists are mostly working with the French scientists uh, on this issue and a little bit of uh, uh, US scientists in the East Coast. Next slide. So here is another criteria which is called the severity score and again it's a Telhashimir severity score and you can see that we can score it. We can see if the age of onset was less than five years, that means the symptoms started before the five years of age that gets a three here. So these scores, we will get in through these and then add them up. So if we get a score of two to five, that's a mild disease. If we get six to 10, that's a moderate disease. And we, anything higher than 10 is a severe case of that one. Next. So here is obviously, the Turks have it. They claim and they use it very efficiently because of the extensive research that they do. Uh, on FMF, they use it very efficiently, efficiently to claim that they are indigenous Mediterranean people. And uh, I was in a Washington talk, and I um, kind of embarrassed one of them by my, uh, asking a question about how about Kurds? Are Kurds considered Turks or not? Because this is in Kurdish population, and we all know that one uh, twenty-five percent of Turkish population is Kurdish. So all those. Uh, symptoms and the, the diagnosis come from mostly Kurds, if they have the Muslim names, or uh, goes from the Armenians, Jews, and Greeks who either converted during uh, the genocide, or they were taken, those Dev Shirmas, the little kids who were taken and raised as Turks, those all had the genes. So, uh, but again, it's called in the Turks and it's very accepted, because they do the research on it because they have the patients, and uh, they, they kind of adopted it as their own, which is really uh, helpful for them to show they're from the Mediterranean region. Now, what this research, what they did, and they do fairly uh, reasonable research. It's not cutting edge, it's reasonable research yet. Uh, we should give some credit. Uh, so FMF, uh, here it shows how the FMF works with uh, liver function. So many research goes on to tie FMF to other disorders. How does that work? And the reason to, for tying those is because some of them are not explained. And I'll get to those cases when I have the case studies. You can't explain why these pains so similar to FMF symptoms come, but then there's no mutation. Or we, there's one mutation, but this is a severe case. It's not supposed to happen with one mutation because we have our other copy who will work. So these are all cases that we will get to that. Uh, they showed that in liver function, uh, for the people who had uh, attacks, obviously the liver enzyme level, <laughs> some of them went higher, so it affects the liver as well. That's all that this study does. Next. So here, this is a study that was done with, uh, I believe it's, uh, it's with the French Institute and Armenians uh, in Armenia. Yes, it's, uh, it's Serge Amslam from uh, France. So what they did, is that they showed uh, MEFE is the gene for FMF. That's what it's called. It's called MEFV. Now, SAA1 and 2 are serum amyloid alpha 1 and alpha 2. So these two genes are where they create the amyloid tissue, the amyloidosis, the most severe symptom of the FMF, which we all want to uh, not have. Now, 
And APOE, again, is involved in the amyloidosis. Of course, APOE is involved mostly in the brain and uh, it causes Alzheimer as well because amyloid tissue uh, sits on the brain tissue and stops, blocks those neurons. Now, you can see that in this is the normal alpha-alpha genotype for SSA, SAA1 and 2. And you can see for the people who have the other genotype, uh, FMF, renal amyloidosis, that is the first line, you can see the other is 25%. And the, uh, this one is less for SAA1 and SAA2. So these genes also play a role. So it's not just the MEFV that say, okay, I have the FMF mutation, then probably I will get amyloidosis and my kidneys may have problems. No, not that simple. There are other genes involved which we have to consider and look at those, see if those genes actually are causing some extra amyloid tissue there, yes or no. So that's the case. Next. So let's look at the genetics of the uh, FMF and DNA testing. Here is how it's translated from parents to uh, children. Now, this small ends that means an affected person. That means both copies of the gene in, in the human that we have are affected. So, one per, uh, children, everyone will get one copy, right? One copy comes from mother's side, one copy from father's side. Now, the father, okay, this is right the opposite. They, usually, when there is small, that means affected. Now, they put the small as not affected. So this is healthy individual, that's a carrier, that means has one mutation. So the chances of having a fully affected person, uh, although this says affected, but this is for a dominant trait. And that's what we studied in our research, because we found that 20% of individuals in Armenian population have only one mutation, but they have the symptoms. This is called a dominant trait of a genetic. That means it doesn't matter if your other gene is healthy or not, if one of them is out, then you get the disease. So this is a dominant trait. Now the next slide will show it much better. So here is just a recessive trait. Usually it's transmitted this way. That means if father and mother are carriers, and here is the correct way of doing it, because small g's are for affected people. Now father and mother are carriers, 25% of the chance there is that a fully blown, both affected genes will be uh, inherited. Now, 15% will be carriers and 25% will be uh, healthy adults. So, what before we published this paper, many people were looking at it, but then we had, uh, I'll show you what we did, which was pretty neat, and then we convinced everyone, because after the publication, Wayne Grody from UCLA, who runs the FMF clinic at UCLA, uh, emailed me and asked me to go and um, talk about our research to them, which is, uh, was quite an honor because he's an authority in the genetic field in the world, not just uh, the United States. So then we said, okay, if we have one mutation, we found three of them, because there's lots of mutations, that we have to start treating if they're asymptomatic. And I'll show you why. So this is how.